This is Africa Now on your dish surface from African Network TOS TV. I am Adesua Oswi. Polls opened in Niger on Sunday as voters went to pick a new president in a runoff election set to mark the first ever transfer of power through the ballot box in the country. Mohamed Bazoum, an ally of incumbent President Mohamed Usufu, received 39% of the votes in the first round of votes in December. He now faces a single opponent, Mahamani Usmani, who was president from 1993 to 1996. Only 7.5 million of the country's 22 million people were eligible to vote on Sunday, a reflection of the population's youthfulness. Thousands of soldiers were deployed nationwide for the vote, set to usher in a peaceful handover between elected presidents, a first since Niger's independence from France in 1960. Several foreign observer missions were also on hand, including from the economy community of West African states, ECOWAS, and the Francophone Organization of French-speaking countries. The standing independent electoral commission said in a statement on Sunday that fake voting cards had been in circulation in several regions of the country. Still on Niger's election, it is reported that seven members of the Niger's Electoral Commission Senate were killed during the country's presidential election runoff when their vehicle hit a mine and exploded in the troubled western region of Tilaberi. A vehicle belonging to Senate and carrying election workers to their polling stations hit a mine in the rural commune of Dago in the southwest, said Haruna Mokalia, vice president of the commission's local branch. They were leaving to drop off ballot boxes and the members of the polling station, adding that three other workers were seriously wounded. Tilaberi is in the three border area of Nigeria, Burkina Faso and Mali, where armed groups linked to Al-Qaeda and ISIL have strengthened their foothold, launching frequent attacks and making swaths off the western portion of the Sahel ungovernable. The region's government confirmed the death toll following Sunday's explosion. Libya's interior minister survived an assassination attempt after his motorcade came under fire outside the capital. Speaking to Reuters, Bahashaga said a vehicle started encroaching on its convoy and people inside the vehicle opened fire, leading to an exchange of fire in which one of his guards and one of the attackers were killed. It's not an incident that came by chance, but well was well planned, I beg your pardon, Bashiga said. His guards pursued the vehicle and it overturned, he said, adding that they arrested two people, one of whom was wanted by police. The stabilization support apparatus said in a statement posted online that Bashiga's guards had opened fire on one of his vehicles as it passed his convoy. The incident comes as the internationally recognized government of the national accords, GNA, in which Bashaga serves, prepares to make way for a new interim government selected in a UN-led process aimed at unifying Libya's warring factions. The regional leaders of Somalia's semi-autonomous regions of Pontland and Jabaland skipped a meeting convened by President Mohamed Abdullahi Farmaja to unlock a stalemate on how to proceed with elections. The leaders of the two regions said they no longer recognized President Farmaja, whose first term ended on 8 February without the election of a successor. President Farmanjo's office tweeted photos of him meeting four other regional leaders on Sunday. On Friday, security forces clashed with demonstrators who wanted the president to leave office. Somalia's parliament passed a resolution that allows the president to re remain in power until his successor is elected. This is your digital first from African Network, TOS TV. You're watching Africa Now. More stories from the African continent after the break. Welcome back. Moving on to COVID-19 cases across Africa. As of Sunday, February 21, confirmed cases of COVID-19 from 55 African countries reached 3.8 million. Reported deaths in Africa reached 100,998 and 3.3 million people have recovered. South Africa has the most reported cases with over 1.5 million and 48,940 deaths. Other most affected countries are Morocco with 480,948 records cases, Tunisia with 227,643 cases, I beg your pardon, and Egypt with 177,543 recorded cases. 
The World Health Organization has urged Tanzania to start reporting coronavirus cases and share its data. In a statement, the Director General of the World Health Organization, Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus, said, on a quote, This situation remains very concerning. I renew my call for Tanzania to start reporting COVID-19 cases and share data. I also call on Tanzania to implement the public health measures that we know work in breaking the chains of transmission and to prepare for vaccination. The WHO's plea comes after a spate of death of government officials. Tanzania is one of the few countries in the world not to publish data on COVID-19 cases. It, la it last did so in May when about 500 cases and 20 deaths were recorded. President Magufuli had previously played down the virus and refused to take measures to curb its spread. The health minister said earlier this month that Tanzania had no plans to vaccinate. However, on Sunday, Magufuli encouraged people to wear masks to avoid infection, but he urged people to use locally made masks, saying without evidence that some of the imported ones were not safe. Away from COVID-19 developments, the authorities in Kenya have confirmed reports that two giraffes were electrocuted in a conservancy by low-hanging power lines. The Rothschild giraffe died in Soyamsu conservancies. Rothschilds are one of the most endangered species of giraffes, with only a few hundreds left in the wild. The Kenya Wildlife Service, KWS, was reacting to tweets by conservationist Paula Kahumbu that an endangered species was at risk. Kahumbu said the deaths could have been prevented if experts advice was heeded. Risk impact assessments are notoriously poor on many development projects, she tweeted. Uh, KWS said officials from the state-owned power distributing company Kenya Power would replace the poles. Preliminary reports indicate that the height of the electric electricity poles rather crossing Siamsu conservancies is low, below giraffe's height, a statement read in part. This is still your digital first from African Network, TOS TV. You're still watching Africa Now. Still ahead, business and sports. Thank you for staying tuned. In business, Sudan's central bank sharply devalued the currency on Sunday, announcing a new regime to unify official and black market exchange rates in an effort to overcome a crippling economic crisis and access debt relief. The change is a key reform demanded by foreign donors and the International Monetary Fund, but was delayed for months as shortages of basic goods and rapid inflation complicated a fragile political transition. The central bank said the indicative rate at £375 to the dollar, several commercial banking sources said, from a previous official rate of £55. Recently, the dollar traded at between £350 and £400 Sudanese pounds on the black market. The central bank will set a daily indicative rate in a flexible managed float. A secular central bank said, banks and exchange bureaus are required to trade within 5% above or below that rate, as well as paving the way for debt relief. The devaluation would help stabilize the currency, reduce smuggling and speculation, and attract remittances from Sudanese working overseas, the central bank said in a statement. Amidst growing credit uncertainty among local banks, the Rwanda Central Bank is increasing supervisory oversight over local banks. This is aimed at ensuring prudent assessment of borrowers that are unlikely to pay, assessment of business continuity management, as well as accurate provisioning to avoid effects that could destabilize the financial sector. The Central Bank's Financial Stability Committee meeting on Thursday last week recommended an assessment of the business continuity management in all supervised financial institutions institutions to understand the ability to deliver critical operations through disruptions. Peace Uwase, the Director General of the Financial Stability at the Central Bank, that the assessment will, amongst other aspects, assess whether existing business continuity plans have been updated given the COVID-19 experience. Banks that are found with gaps will be required to submit remedial plans to close any gaps identified. 
And in sports, the president of the International Football Federation, FIFA, Gianni Infantino, launched Saturday the project's organizer school championship in the Democratic Republic of Congo that will be re replicated at the African level. In the presence of President Felix Shekedi, current chairman of the African Union, we have a problem at the sporting level, but as FIFA has just allowed us to go back to the grassroots in schools, it allows us to have athletes who have a good level. It also allows our children to be physically strong, said Congolese sport minister Amos Mbayou. The president of the FIFA closed by Algiers and African tour started since Tuesday, which led him to Nakchut, Mauritania, Bangui in Central African Republic, Brazzaville in Congo and Kinshasa in Democratic Republic of Congo. And that is Africa now on your digital first Pan African News Network, TOS TV. For more updates, visit our website at www.tostvnetwork.com. Also follow and like TOS TV Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And remember to subscribe on YouTube. Do stay with us and enjoy more programs on TOS TV Network. I am Adesu Aosui. Thank you for watching.